and welcome to our first interview with Tanya Wade. She is the, the Resource Lab Manager at Manufacturing Solutions Center in Carolina. And today we're just going to learn a little bit about what she does, what the Solutions Center does, and how it can help you as an entrepreneur. So I want to get started with the main piece here, Tanya, which is tell me a little bit about what does does and how it can and what your mission statement is. Yes. Well, first, thank you, Christy, for having me on your podcast. Um, so the Manufacturing Solutions Center is a testing prototyping R&D facility. We actually got started in 1990 as the Hosiery Technology Center, and that came about when the hosiery industry had requested some more industry training in that specific area. So the Manufacturing Solutions Center is part of Catawba Valley Community College, but we do have two separate facilities that are not on campus. So that's why the hosiery industry had reached out to CBCC to help with that education and training piece there. Um, over the years, we took on a lot of other types of services and um, it, it all stems from industry demand and needs. So through that process, that's where we took on the testing and the different types of prototyping and the other types of areas that we have here at MSC. And so in 2012, instead of the Hosiery Technology Center, that's when we became the Manufacturing Solutions Center. Oh, okay. Okay. And so what is your, your mission exactly? Like how, how can, if I'm an entrepreneur and I have an idea and, and it may be a knit idea like and I know you guys have really cool knitting machines which we'll get into later and stuff like that or it might be a, you know a non-knit construction that I'm, I have in my head I want to bring it to life but I have no idea what I'm doing I don't know who to talk to to get it to happen I don't know where to go to find the fabrics I don't know anything so how can you guys help me as a baby entrepreneur to kind of get the ball rolling yeah so the first thing you would ask about our mission um, and the Manufacturing Solutions Center, our mission is to help domestic manufacturers meet demand, increase sales, improve quality and efficiency. At the end of the day, it's all about helping these manufacturers create and retain jobs specifically here in the U.S. Um, as far as how we can help entrepreneurs and small brands and those folks that reach out to us, uh, the short version is that I provide sourcing assistance here is, is my actual position. So I handle the sourcing assistance, but I can also direct brands and manufacturers to resources, um, other types of resources that can help as far as the cut and sew piece or direct them to the correct people here at MSC who handle the knitting. We have knitting machines in-house, like you had mentioned, and the knitting machines that we have we have Lanati sock machines. So um, anybody that comes to MSC, anybody who has ever been to MSC and, and done a tour um, or seen us at a trade show, I'm sure you have a pair of MSC socks. And those things are like walking on clouds. Like people call back and they're like, where can I buy more? Oh, cool. Those socks are actually made here at MSC. And we don't sell those. Those are strictly promotional we do those to, to kind of help get out into the industry and help people remember us, right? So, and it works great. Of um, course it does, it's a great calling card. What a great idea. It, it is, it's amazing. And like I said, the socks themselves, I call them hugs for your feet. So I, get a couple, <laughs> I get a couple strange looks at trade shows when I ask people if they want a hug for their feet. Um, they realize that I'm giving them socks, so. Um, but again, we have those Lenati sock machines, so we make that here. We also help clients with product development as well as small run productions on those sock machines. We have the Santoni seamless knit machines, which is all about those more of the compression type garments. And that's more. I'm sorry, like Spanx? Is that what you mean? Like like yeah. compression, like like under like undergarments, exactly. that sort of thing? Like undergarments, okay. it can be. Um, base layer type stuff, like okay. thermal stuff, um, or it can just be compression t-shirts or regular shirts, but it's not anything, the Santoni is not anything you would do like sweaters or okay. that heavier stuff. Okay. Um, again, it's great for like you're saying the Spanx and so forth, because at the end of the day, it can do different types of compression in different areas. 
So maybe you need it to be a little tighter around the waist versus yeah. the hips, vice versa. So those Santoni machines are really awesome at being able to do different construction. It can go from a knit fabric into a mesh seamlessly instead of like the cut and sew. You actually have to have the different fabric right, and put them together and have a seam. Yeah. So the Santonis, those are, are pretty, um, pretty cool machines. And we have seven of those. So we can do every type of size from a 13 inch diameter to a 19 inch diameter. That's really important on those machines because if you just have a couple of sizes, then it's only going to do a, a small or a medium, whatever size the diameter is. So okay. we can do pretty much everything from an extra small to an extra large in size. Um, and then we also have some stole flatbed machines. The stole flatbed knitting machines are really cool when it comes to technical stuff or the heavier stuff. Okay. It's great um, if you're doing something that needs to have a stop and start. A great example of that is one of the companies that's here, um, they started in our incubator area, but now they've moved over into this private lease sector and mm -hmm. they're, they've are they been with us seven years. So they're a, a full business now. They're no longer an incubator or a startup and they do some amazing work. One of the customers that they have been working with is a company called Apollo and they do dance sleeves dance foot wear like and it helps oh. with injury so it helps not only prevent injury it helps if you've already injured your your foot so when we're talking ballet different types of dance um but one of the really cool things is they have this foot sleeve the heel is cut out the toe is cut out and when i say cut out it's open right okay. And so they put this sleeve on. You can't just take a sock and cut the heel and the toe and sew no, that. No. You're, you're going to have to use something to bond all those yarns or threads right. together so it doesn't unravel. Right. Um, and you can't, so, and to put that like a tape or something, that would make it bulky. Mm -hmm. That flatbed knitting machine, that machine can stop and finish that edge and then pick up somewhere else. So that's the big difference in that circular knit, which is going to just knit a tube okay. versus that flatbed machine. That's and, crazy. So you could really do anything. I mean, yeah. with the two different types of machines, it's like infinite possibilities for people. Exactly. That is so cool. And are you guys kind of like the only ones in your area that have these sorts of machinery? I know I know that Carolina was a big, or the Carolinas, excuse me, were, were really big in the American textile industry back in the day. And, and we're going to get a little bit more into that later on. But um, in your area, are there other places that have these sorts of machines? Or are you guys kind of like the end-all be-all for this kind of approach? Well, and no, there's other places in the U.S. Now, in, in the our US, area, right. um, you might find somebody that has some a couple Santoni machines. I can tell you to find a company that has seven Santoni sizes, the different from the 13 to the 19, um, especially being the new machines is going to be rare. Um, and then the Stoll flatbed machines, again, there's not a ton of the knitting machines in the U.S. There's not a ton of companies that have those. Okay. So it is one of those things that, you know, Innova Knits is the company I mentioned. Um, those folks only do technical products. Okay. So they're not doing apparel. They're not doing any sweaters, anything like that. But there are a couple other companies in the U.S. that will do sweaters and things. But again, it's a handful. So your knitting machines aren't something that you're going to find nearly as much as your cut and sew factories. Um, it is one of those. And again, when you find some of those knitting companies, like Innovanets, they only do technical stuff. So they've done shoe uppers for New Balance. They've done some other stuff that is really cool that I can't mention. <laughs> um, <laughs> but again, they do technical stuff that's like um, not apparel. So okay. yeah, there, there's companies out there, but they're few and far between right now. So if there's if that's the case and there's few and far between companies and you know there's so many moving parts when you have 
a concept, right? There's so many variables, so many pieces that have to kind of all align into the synchronous thing in order for it to come off and come alive and get out to the public and actually start making some profit and, and getting somewhere. So as the resource lab manager at, at MSC, what exactly is your role to help people um, to facilitate success for them? Like what, what do you do to help navigate this, this terrain? Yeah, so the big thing with the resource lab is on the sourcing piece. Okay. When they come to us and they need fabric or they need narrow trims or they need hardware, elastic, things like that. So that's the big part of the sourcing, uh, the, the resource lab that we have here and the sourcing piece that I do. There's another component as well, though. So when we have entrepreneurs and brands reach out and they're looking for to have socks or something on a knitting machine produced, then in that case, I direct them to our application process because we do that, the knitting piece here at MSC. Now, if they reach out and they are looking for cut and sew assistance, which is um, for the last 10 years has been predominantly what I did for an organization called the Carolina Textile District. Okay. I was still here at MSC um, as an employee, but the Carolina Textile District subcontracted me to be their client intake manager there and be a matchmaker, if you will. So. Okay. MSC helped found the Carolina Textile District in 2013 with two other organizations. One is a worker-owned cut and sew facility. The other one was economic development. And so when MSC got with those two organizations, they started CTD to be a matchmaker, if you will, between entrepreneurs and startups and brands and domestic cut and sew facilities. Okay. So when somebody reaches out to me for knitting, not a problem, they're going to be directed here um, to one of these teams. But if it's cut and sew, then I'm going to refer them to the Carolina Textile District. Okay. And that's because those folks handle the cut and sew piece. Now, we also get people that come through and they're looking to do non-textile type stuff. So maybe oh. it's rubber, wood, metal, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And MSC, we have an engineering department here. And we do structural furniture type testing or just structural testing. And we also have a 3D printer. We have CNC routers. We have um, non-textile type prototyping that we do here as well. That's right. I saw that on your website. There was like some cool videos on your website where they showed machines hitting like an ottoman and like yeah. stressing out a, a chair handle and doing all kinds of wackadoodle stuff. So that's right. I forgot. When I think of you guys, I think of textiles, but you actually do a little bit of everything and you've got those 3D printers and all that kind of cool stuff. So really you can help a variety of people, not just people looking to go into the textile realm. Absolutely. And then one of the other things I do, um, so again, the sourcing piece is a big part of my position now. And the just the the guidance, if you will, of trying to direct them to people that can help on the other pieces that maybe I don't handle, but it's done here at MSC, or maybe it's not done here. It's something that somebody I know of outside MSC does, then I refer them that way. But I also teach the Carolina Textile District sewn, good work, sewn goods workshop. So I was just going to ask you about, I was just going to ask you about that. So yeah, yeah, let's explore that. So it's called the Sewn Goods Workshop. Yeah. Okay. And what do I get if I go to that? What what happens if I go to that? Well, and, and the reason it came about was, um, like I had mentioned, I was the CTD's client intake manager for up until last April. So for nine okay. years. Okay. And my position was I reviewed applications and I was supposed to match entrepreneurs and brands to the manufacturers based on product type. Okay. And so the first two years, I thought, man, this isn't that hard, right? <laughs> Well, two years in, the manufacturers came back and they're like, listen, you know, we can't work with these startups and entrepreneurs that you're sending to us. And that was problematic because when I handed over that role to the new lady um, last April, we had at that time over 4,000 people that had come through the Carolina Textile District. And yes, a huge number of people that are looking 
four cut and sew assistants. And 70 to 75% were startups who had never done any type of business, let alone textiles, and then or entrepreneurs. So maybe they had done a product, but it wasn't textile based okay. or people that were producing overseas, which is a completely different experience right. than doing it here in the U.S. Right. So overseas is real easy. You have one contact and they take care of everything here. It's not always that simple. Um, so what was happening was I was connecting these clients, if you will, to these manufacturers. And then the manufacturers were having to spend a ton of time educating those clients on what they needed to do and the process and typical things like typical cut and sew labor cost or time frames. And so at that point, the manufacturers were like, listen, this we don't have time for this. So that's where um, we developed the CTD Song Goods Workshop. And I went to the manufacturers and I said, what are things that you not only need the clients to know, but what do you want them to know? Like, what are some of those things that you really want to tell them, don't do this, but you don't because you're afraid that you're going to make them mad. Exactly. As, as crazy as that sounds, I've had some manufacturers sit in on the class since we've been doing it. We started it in 2016. And I've had manufacturers come and sit in on the class because I want them to see what I'm teaching the clients. I want them to let me know, are there things, more things I should be teaching or have things changed? Like, so their input on the manufacturer side is, is really beneficial. And I've had some of the manufacturers be like, wow, you know, you tell these people stuff in this class that if we say it to them, they get mad. And I'm like, right. yeah, but there's a difference. So when I tell them, don't do this, I'm telling them before they do it. Typically, when a manufacturer says, don't do this, they're telling them because they've already done it. So then it feels more like they're reprimanding them, right? That they're in trouble. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like, right. Okay, so exactly. So yeah, the, the workshop, there's five different modules that we cover. It starts with material sourcing. And we teach people how to source their materials as well, the same way I do, because I charge an hourly rate. If I can teach somebody how to source their materials, they have a much better chance of not only finding exactly what they want, but other things that could also work, right? So I really enjoy that aspect of it, them coming actually to the workshop. We have a sourcing library in-house with over 3,900 samples that they get to look through. Um, so we start with material sourcing and then we talk finishing and printing so that they understand you can't just go buy a white fabric that could have some type of water repellency oh, I know. and take it to be printed on right. or garment dyed because that's not going to work. Right. Um, then we go over design and pattern making. Oh, There's a lot of times people don't, have a clue the difference in a designer and a pattern maker and they don't understand if they need to work with one or the other okay and do you actually generate any patterns like any oak tag like patterns or anything like that or it's just a matter of explaining the difference between here's the person who conceptualizes it and makes the flat and the flat has all the technical information on it and then it gets put into you know oak tag or what have you into the actual cutting patterns themselves that they'll put on the fabric and actually cut around is that more of what you educate on yeah so we're more of the education piece um but also oh, i'm so sorry we're no. Oh, and I hit the wrong button. Hey, Deanna, I am so sorry. I'm doing a podcast and I thought I quieted you, but I answered you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, hon. Bye. I am so sorry. I thought that that was the mute. It was not. <laughs> That's okay. I never knew how to work the phones either. I, I, I'm always like, where's the button? I don't understand it. <laughs> I was like, I'll take care of that. No, I answered it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, as far as what we teach in the workshop, it's all about education. Okay. But at the same time, we take it a step further. So with material sourcing, we're educating people on the difference in knits and wovens, the different okay. types of fibers, how to source your materials. And then you also get a sourcing list that has companies. And it's divided up between knits, wovens, technical fabrics, home decor. 
And then it goes one step further than that. And each, like under knits, the left side will be mills and manufacturers. The right side will be wholesalers, converters, people that sell small quantity. The wow. reason we do that is we don't want you reaching out to a mill if you can't afford their minimums, right? Don't waste their time. Don't waste your time. And so we have the material sourcing list that they will get. And then when we do finishing and printing, we actually have a list of finishers and printers and where they can go and get prepare for print and prepare for dye fabrics. So PFP, PFD mm -hmm. fabrics, they get a list of those. When it comes to pattern makers, the difference in pattern makers and, and designers, one of the big things is designers are kind of like the production companies. They're going to have their specialties. So we're not going to give the clients a list of designers and be like, okay, reach out to these folks okay. because they have specialties, right? So some of them are not going to take on undergarments or swimwear or denim or leather. Right. And then some of them do. And that's where CTD actually has to do more of the matchmaking. They okay. look at the client's product and then they figure out who's the best designer, but not just who's capable, who's interested the same with production companies. So you're going to find companies that are capable of producing a product, but if they're not interested, it's not going to matter. And there's different things that sparks their interest or turns them away, if you will. For production companies, the number one reason they pass on projects that CTD shares with them yeah. is price points are too low. Really? So for price yes. points for the, for the final, like the retail price point, is that what you mean? For the cut and sew. So oh, I'm sorry. one of the things, oh yeah, no, that's okay. I'm glad you asked because one of the things we teach in the workshop is a lot of times, one of the ways we know somebody's a startup or an entrepreneur is we get this email with five questions. And the first one is how much is it going to cost to do awesome. this? Yeah. We know that that's somebody that's never worked with a manufacturing company in the U.S. Okay. Because the client is responsible for providing most of the materials. And I say most typically all of the materials except thread and your manufacturers typically provide a basic thread. So if you need a specialty thread, like they may provide a poly or a poly blend thread is what they use. And if you need a cotton thread or you need something that's um, a different color than what they provide, then you have to provide that as well. Um, but again, the question of how much is this going to cost me that lets us know they haven't worked with a domestic mass manufacturer. Right. right. Um, because they are responsible for choosing the materials, and that's one of the biggest driving factors. So when the production companies look at price, what they're really interested in is what is that targeted cut and sew price that this client's trying to, to get the cut and sew cost within this range? Okay. Um, and that's where t-shirts is a great example. I know average from multiple cut and sew companies. If you're going to do a custom t-shirt, I'm not talking about blanks where they're producing the same one thousand right. a day. Like Gildan. Gildan would be an example Gildan. of a blank. Bella. You can go to AC Moore. I guess an AC Moore. Oh my gosh. This shows how old I am. Where you can go to uh, Joanne Fabric or one of the ones that are still around. Um, and you yes, can I didn't know AC Moore isn't. Are they gone? They're they're not around in PA anymore. Oh. I don't know if they went out entirely, but they're not. It's Michaels and Joanne's. That's that's it for us up here in Pennsylvania. Um, at least well, in the Philadelphia area. You know, come to think of it, we did have an AC Moore and they closed it down and there's something else in there now. Yeah. So I don't know if they went belly up or if they're just closing a lot of the brick and mortars. But anyhow, one of the yeah, craft sorry. stores, <laughs> the craft stores normally have, you know, blank canvas totes. They have, you know, blank t-shirts yes. in different colors. They have these pre-done t-shirts. They all are the exact same cut and style. There's, you know, the same, you know, whip, a small is a small is a small, you know, it, it all kind of yeah. goes away from there. You're talking about like, Custom. custom. Like I want a specific yes. size for this small. I want the sleeve to be more of a three quarter on my t-shirt versus a cap. I want the, it to be a crop versus an elongation, like those sorts of custom yes. customized pieces. Okay. Okay. Yes. And you choose the fabric. So on blanks, mm -hmm. they choose the fabric, right? So they choose right. fabric and measurements custom. You're choosing your own fabric and you're choosing your own measurements and style and, and all of that. So that's when I tell people for t-shirts, a custom t-shirt, 
the average cut and sew costs that I've seen, and these are for companies that are within CTD's membership, typically East Coast, right? Okay. Okay. And and a lot of them do smaller type runs, not a thousand units. They might have 200 unit minimums. Instead. And that's per size, correct? Well, it depends on the company. So some oh. will allow you to do multiple sizes and colorways within their minimum. Some oh. go per style, per size. Oh, so okay. one of the biggest things in the class is just teaching all the different things that these companies can offer. It can be the same company, the same type of company. So it can be a cut and sew company and one will offer full service. Okay. So they may help with product development, with design and sourcing materials and patterns and cut and sew. Wow. And then you can go to the next cut and sew next door and all they do is cut and sew. So before you go to them, you have to have patterns and fabric and all of that done. Okay. So the class is extremely beneficial there. But, you know, the t-shirt pricing between different manufacturers, we've encountered anywhere between a 6 to $15 cut and sew cost. So that's just the cut and sew. That's, that's not my sew. fabric. That's not anything else. That's just to have them cut and put okay. together the t-shirt is yes. between six to twelve dollars. Six to fifteen. Six to now 15. that's multiple companies that I have gotten the price from. So one could have said it's six to ten because they charge an hourly rate less than another company. Okay. And another one was more like, well, ours is eight to twelve, and somebody else was like ten to fifteen. So it's going to vary, right? Because okay. companies charge different hourly rates. Um, their minimums also can affect that in some right. cases. If right. they have those higher minimums, they put those in place because they can get a little bit cheaper then. Right. But yeah. So I know if somebody comes through and they list on their application that they want to sell a t-shirt for $10 that's custom, there's absolutely no way. No, but not in the U.S. Yeah, they can. They're going to be lucky to get it made because at six dollars, which is the absolute lowest labor cost, right? That would be you getting the fabric, your tags, your labels, your packaging, your shipping, and all that within that other four dollars. Wow. So those are things that are extremely helpful. Like when we start talking in um, the difference in the pattern makers and the designers and. Uh, the difference in production companies and where we teach the types of companies that we work with and that we experience, at the end of the day, it's pretty much all of these companies here in the U.S., you can't take a cut and sew and put it in just all of them in one box because they're going to have different terms and conditions. Okay. They're going to offer different services. And so that's one of the big things about teaching people.